I haven't been able to preach a lot this year and I haven't been in the pulpit as much as I maybe would like to. I want to thank, hasn't Pastor Lynn done an excellent job just running the church and just done excellent. And, and I'm just so blessed by having such an awesome staff and I've just uh, was with uh, this weekend, I was telling you I was in DC with Dave and Aaron and Craig and Clint and Katie and other ones there and we were just, I just said, Lord, you're so awesome that you raise up strong leaders. You see sons and daughters grow up and become fathers and mothers in their own right. And, and that's a joy, that's a delight to see reproduction, to have legacy. And I thank God that we have a multi-generational church. I'm thankful for that because I don't want something to be ended when I end or when, when you end. I want the thing to go on from generation to generation. And so that is extremely important. And God's been speaking to me for several weeks out of Psalm 24. And last weekend, uh, Kevin Leal preached out of 24. Bob Hazlett preached out of Psalm 24. I thought, praise God. Because this is a, a very powerful Psalm. And I encourage you to, to read it and meditate in it. And I just want to share a few thoughts this morning that God has been speaking to me about that I feel are relevant to what he's doing in your life and in this place and in our city and in our region during this time in the earth. When we have prayer going on, fasting going on, you say, well, I'm not fasting. Well, you don't have to fast to pray. But if you're going to fast, you ought to be praying along with it. <laughs> but either way, you ought to be praying because prayer, how many know prayer changes things? It, it certainly does. And Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord in all of its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. He has founded it upon the seas and he has established it upon the waters. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in that holy place? And then he tells us who can ascend and who can stand there. People that have clean hearts or clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted their soul up to an idol nor sworn deceitfully shall receive blessing from the Lord. Come on, say, God wants to bless me. I don't know who ever told you he doesn't. He does. The first thing God said when he created Adam and Eve, he said, I want to bless you. It is a good thing that I've done and I'm gonna bless you. Come on, say I'm a good thing and God wants to bless me. Because he said that we are his righteousness from God, the God of our salvation. My goodness. You know, the one thing that I'm excited about, that I made it from 2011 to 2012. <laughs> Some of you didn't think you were going to make it, but you did. Come on, say, I made it. That's something to rejoice about. That's important. Because this year, God began to speak to me that this is a year of establishment. This is the year that he is going to begin to establish things. I talked some uh, a few weeks ago about the favor of the Lord and God talking to me about those particular things on, on New Year Eve. But it is important that we understand that God doesn't just start something, he finishes it. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. The problem is, that God's finished time and when I think doesn't always coincide. And what goes on from the start to the finish, sometimes I didn't expect. But the fact is that I have to trust God. God wants to finish what he starts. And what he started in the last season, he's going to finish in this season. Now this is what I heard God say. He didn't say, I'm going to finish in the next season. He said, I'm going to finish in this season. 
How many know this season means the season we're in right now? There are some things about to be finished in your life and you need to take note of what I'm saying today because it's very prophetic. What you started, you will establish. Many times, God starts something and he expects us to walk in obedience and finish that thing or establish that thing. And it is very interesting, the numbers 11 and the numbers 12. The number 11 means transition and the number 12 means establishing. Number 11 means transition. 2011 was a year of transition. I think that the years preceding up to last year was a major year of transition in the kingdom of God and in the whole earth. But I I make that thing personal. I want you to make it personal. This is important that we grab hold of this today because God is establishing his government. I'm not talking about political things today. I'm talking about kingdom government. God is establishing his government in the church and in the earth. When we talk about the kingdom of God, the word kingdom means government, the government of God. So if I'm in the kingdom of God, how many know I'm in the government of God? But this government in the kingdom of God is a kingdom, not a democracy. And a kingdom has a king and a Lord and his name is Jesus. And there is no other. And so whatever he has started, if he started healing your body last year, he's going to finish it right now. I, I felt that strong this morning when I, was, when I was coming to the church. I heard the Lord say, tell the people that, that have things in their body, if he started healing them last year, he's going to finish it this year. If he started opening the door for, for financial provision and new opportunities, he's going to finish it this year. What a, that means he's establishing it. It's getting foundation. And when God begins to tell us to to pray, to press in, he means for us to pray and to press in. It's not really an option. We've got to contend for things that God has delivered unto us. Contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. God initiates things, but he requires us to establish them. I want to say that again. God initiates things, but he requires us to establish them. He says, this is your destiny. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to heal your body. I'm going to bring provision. I'm going to open this new opportunity. I'm going to bring you in this new relationship. And he initiates it, but we have to to finish it or establish it. Wow. And that's what I see God doing. The things that he started the last season in your life, this is the season of establishment. I don't care when that season was. If it was 10 years ago, five years ago, six months ago, this is the season of establishing that thing. Are you hearing me today? Thank you, Jesus. This is the year of moving from transition to stability. There are many of you in the sound of my voice this morning that have felt like everything in your life has been very unstable this past year. Some of you, your job, some of you, your marriages, your family, your children, your health. It has felt very unstable. But I am telling you that God is transitioning you to a position of stability, establishing. Some of you are about to see the manifestation of God's miracle power in ways that you couldn't even imagine six months ago. As I was listening to Jack share, and we talked with him yesterday about some of the things they've gone through as a family and as a ministry. They're not unique in that. That happens to people all over the earth every day. It's just that we think, well, that'll never come to my house. 
That'll never, but then, the, then it comes and you start wondering, Lord, what's wrong with me? Is something wrong with me? Am I doing something wrong? It's like there's an avalanche and it's like it's not stopping. But let me tell you something. Some of you have been in preparation so long that you thought that was your permanent position. And all you've been doing is going through training to get moved into position. Some of the things you've been going through over a long period of time, you've been learning something. God's been training you for something. You have been arriving at the place of establishment, the place of position. Come on, say with me, I'm transitioning to establishing. But sometimes when we get in that time of transition and training, we think that's our permanent position. Well, am I going to live here forever? Is this going to keep on going forever? Is this thing ever going to stop? Is this ever going to quit? Well, pastor, have you ever felt that way? A lot of times. At Jubilee, sometimes for 25 years. You keep running up against the same wall at times, and it seems like, and God keeps saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to finish this, I'm going to establish this. <laughs> okay, God, when? Past, not which decade now, which century, God? I know you're probably more spiritual and you don't ask things like that, but you can get to the place that you wonder, what's going on? And God simply said, I am equipping you. I'm preparing you to possess something. And Psalm 24 is very clear. We cannot be passive about the promises of God. If God made a promise, you've got to be aggressive to con contend for that promise. But when pressure comes, the temptation is to become passive. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. I don't know what's going on. I don't know when it'll ever stop. I don't know what's wrong with me. But we have to, I have to look around this morning and say, Lord, Pensacola is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you brought me here to establish something, so I'm staying right here. Everything belongs to you. You knew all this was coming before I got here and you're going to finish what you started. So show me how to establish this thing. Wow. God is moving us to a different understanding of who he is. In Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord reveals himself as a shepherd. And, and he talks about our wanting how many know that if we have wanting, we need provision? But when we get to Psalm 24, he is not the shepherd anymore. He's the king of glory. God's wanting us to change our view of him from just being the shepherd to being the king. And the king is... When we see him as the king, we don't see our, ourselves as wanting any longer. We see ourselves as heirs and joint heirs with him and ruling with him. Taking dominion with the king. Are you following me? Wanting means I need provision. But to rule means that God has given me the authority to dictate what he has said. How many know the scripture says where the word of a king is, there is power. The word of the king is not a word, it's the word. It is the final word. And when we have the word of the king, we have now the privilege and the responsibility to dictate and declare what the king has said. So whatever he said over your life, we sing a song here, what he sang over me, what he spoke over me. 
I believe that thing is going to be established. I'm going to rule. We, once we begin to understand our position with the king, then we begin to take dominion over the territory that he has assigned us to. And so God is moving us from transition to position. Is this making sense to you today? There are several times in Scripture where there are major transitions from the number 11 to 12. I don't have time to, to share all of that with you today. But it is important that we understand that. One of the first places that we see that is when Jacob, Jacob had 11 sons and he was taking those sons to meet up with Esau. And that's where Jacob had this experience where he wrestled with the angel and came away with a limp and God came to him and spoke to him and gave him a new name, said, you're no longer going to be called Jacob, the supplanter, the deceiver, but you are going to be called Israel. I'm changing your name. And what a wonderful moment that was to get a new name. Aren't you glad one day he gave you a new name? In the moment you were born again, you went from death to life. Your name was written in the Lamb's book of life for all of eternity. Hallelujah. And you became an heir with him and a joint heir with him. What a day that was in your life. But on the way, they journeyed from Bethel and they were a little distance, it says, and I think it's in Genesis 35. And Rachel labored in childbirth. And she had very hard labor. And when she was in hard labor, her, the midwife said to Rachel, don't fear, you will have this son also. And it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni. Obviously, she was in labor here, uh, about to have the 12th son of Jacob. It was a transition. But what happened was, according to the scripture, that she was in labor without effect. She had come to her conclusion that she was going to not only die in childbirth, but the child was going to die. And it seemed like all of this transition of bringing a new, new life into the world was not going to be over. The promise was not going to happen. But her midwife said, don't fear. You will have this son also. But she felt like she was laboring with no effect. I'm laboring. I'm going through all of this pain. And it's not going to produce anything but more death. And sometimes when you are walking through that time of transition, when God is taking you somewhere, you feel like that you are in labor without any effect. I, I don't see anything changing around my life. My job's not changing. My family's not changing. My finances are not changing. My health's not changing. Matter of fact, it seems like it's getting worse instead of better. I mean, we know people out there. Maybe they're not in here, but come on. We've all been there. When you feel like Rachel felt, she was dying. She was having labor with no effect. And she said, okay, I'm going to name this child Ben-Onai, meaning the son of my sorrow. That was the name she gave her son. And Jacob came in and said, did she name the baby yet? Yeah, she named him Ben-Onai, the son of her sorrow. And Jacob said, no, absolutely not. We will not call him that. We will name him Benjamin. He's the son of my right hand. He is the son of promise. He is the son of inheritance. Hallelujah. You see, it doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter what your circumstance says about you. What has God said about you? That's the issue. We had the baby down here this morning. And I heard for years God saying this promise to Tim and Angela. Until they were tired of it. They didn't want to hear it anymore. 
And I would kind of cringe when I, somebody would come along and give them another prophetic word and I'm thinking, I think Angela will just leave the church. She'll just walk out. She's tired of hearing it. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, God, you keep saying this over and over and over. Just do it. Because I've been faithful, I'm laboring, but it seems to have no effect. Nothing seems to be changing. But you know what? God is training you for position. Come on, say, he's training me for my new position. Hallelujah. Everything around you may speak of weakness and failure and insignificance and sorrow and despair. But the secret is, what has your father said about? Though you lie down among sheepfolds, Psalm 68, 13, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. In other words, he said, though you be surrounded by ashes and brokenness, confusion and despair, you are not what you are surrounded by. Come on, say it with me. I am not what I'm surrounded by. I am what my daddy God says I am. I mean, Darlene and I have 25-year prophecies hanging over our head right now. I mean, things God said years ago, and we're seeing some of them transitioning right now. And I'm thinking, wow. And this is when God spoke this to me. This is the year of establishing. I said, well, Lord, have we been in 25 years of transition? He said, that's right. You've been in 25 years of training. I wish I was a faster learner. Come on, don't be slow learner. <laughs> but the thing about God, he redeems time. Only God can do that. I hope this is encouraging you today because I'm speaking it. Because the fact is, all things are not as they appear. That mischievous little child that we think is so, such a problem inside is a mighty prophet. That crippled beggar, like David, like Jonathan's son Mephibosheth, living in Lodabar, down in the garbage heap, was the son of the king. And when David found him, he brought him into the palace, gave him his inheritance, pushed him up under the table. Nobody could see his crippled legs. All they could see, this is Jonathan's son, and you honor him as the king. Hallelujah. Somebody's about to have a position change. A position change. My God. You know why? Because God sees something in you that other people can't see. I preached that message back in October, I think. Can you stand to be blessed? That's very important. You can get it back, back at the media table. But when he changed Benjamin, ben Oni's name to Benjamin, the son of my right hand, the son of my favor, the son of my strength, God is moving us into position in order to do the things that he has been training us for. And the only person that can stop it is you. The only person that can stop it is me. I can decide to do my own thing. I can decide it's not ever going to happen and go do something else. Or I can let him, I can be, keep walking in that transition. And this is the year of establishing. Come on, say it with me again. 2012 is the year of establishment. Praise God. But during the transition, it feels like the things that we've contended for have died. We've, that that they're, it's too late now, it's over. Every dream and every promise you get from God will have a day of its death before it has its fulfillment. It'll have its day of death before it has its fulfillment. So he says, come on. Let us ascend the hill of the Lord. Do you know you can't go somewhere new until you leave somewhere old? You can't go somewhere you haven't been until you leave somewhere 
that you were. Some of you have lost your job this year. You should be rejoicing. Because you couldn't go where he's taking you if you were still doing that. Well, I didn't think I'd get a lot of amens on that. In the kingdom of God, everything advances. God's not a God of decrease. He's a God of increase. Trust God for promotion in this season. But the secret is seeing the promotion from God's vantage point. That's the secret. God says, if you be faithful over little, I'll give you much. Something has to go for me to have something that's new and fresh. And the secret here is not just changing your position. You have to change your perspective. So he says here in Psalm 24, he has founded upon the sea and established it. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in his holy place? The secret is ascending the hill of the Lord. You cannot see the next level from where you are. You have to climb there. You have to ascend there. And when God's taking you to the next level, you are leaving something behind. And he doesn't always want you to leave that void behind. He wants you to fill it up with something good. He wants you to have somebody take your place. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? And he's very clear here. Because the secret is when we begin to see through God's eyes and through God's perspective, the matter. That's when you see the position. This is where God's taking me. This is where he wants me to go. And once I catch that vision, then I, 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 fear kind of dissipates. Because in, in the beginning when God created, the Holy Spirit was hovering over chaos and darkness. And there was all of this void in Genesis chapter 1. And the Holy Spirit was hovering over it. And all of a sudden, God spoke into that thing and he said, let there be light. And there was light. He spoke it. But then God looked again after he created light and he said, now let's call this thing day. The light was there, but the purpose of the light was to bring day. There was a purpose in that transition. There was a purpose in that creation. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit was on top of this thing. And when he spoke light, now I have light. Why do I have light? Because it shall be called day. That's exactly how God does with your life. God creates you and then he announces what's on the inside of you and he wants you to grab hold of that thing. This is my destiny and I'm going to walk in it all the days of my life. All of your days were written in a book before the foundations of the earth. Think about that. Man. And God called under the light and said, let there be day. Let it be day. He said to Jeremiah, I formed you in your mother's womb and I knew you and I saw you and I called you to be a prophet to the nations. He creates you. Then he sees something on the inside of you that you were created to be and then he speaks it. But it's up to you to establish it. It's up to me. I can hear what God's destined for me from now till Jesus comes and never do it. I say, well, that's good. I hope it happens someday. I hope somebody will make it happen. 
But the fact is that he spoke it over my life. Look what happened in Genesis 2. God creates all the animals, the birds, the fish, the beasts of the field. And he brings them before man and he says, here they are, Adam, name them. And every name that Adam spoke was the name God intended to be on that animal. How did Adam know? Because he was seeing through the eyes of the Creator. But you have, you see, we, we get content with position and God wants us to get perspective. And in order to get perspective, we have to ascend the hill of the Lord. And he said, if you want to ascend there, you got to have clean hands, you got to have a pure heart, and you can't have any idol before you. God is wanting us to catch the perspective that he has for us personally, that he has for us as a church, that he has for us as a city. We have 40 days of prayer for Pensacola. You'll never know what God wants for Pensacola until you ascend the hill in prayer and see through God's eyes. And then he speaks it and you begin to decree it and begin to declare it. Well, I just wish the devil would get out of my way. He didn't have to get out of your way. You can step over him. The scripture says in, in Romans 16 that he shall be shortly crushed under your feet. That doesn't mean after a while he's going to be crushed. That means that through short, deliberate steps with the shoes of the gospel of peace on your feet, Satan will be crushed under your feet. I don't care what obstacle he puts in the way. I don't care what mountain they look, it says can't be moved, what wall or what obstacle of containment there is. When you step with the gospel of peace, he is crushed under your feet and you don't walk around, you walk over. My God. Israel had to cross over. That's another one of those 11th day. You can read it in Deuteronomy. It said 11 days they were at the border. <laughs> and 40 years later. Can you imagine that? In 11 days, God brought them to the border of the promise. But they wouldn't cross over. And 40 years later, they're ready to go in again. But the fact is, God never changed his mind. He still had the same plan. But they had to take their position. But the fact is, folks, when God calls us to cross over somewhere, it requires some work. It'll require some effort on your part and on my part. They had to tear down walls. They had, to, they had to plow up ground. They had to defeat the enemy. They had to plant seed in the soil. They had to take care of the fields. They had to possess the land. He said, Joshua, wherever the sole of your feet touches, you can have it. In other words, it's been there all the time, but you've got to possess it. The day God spoke something over your life, it was there right then. It's not coming some other day. It was there right then. And that's extremely important. In, 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 jo in Joshua 18, and I'm closing, continue, continuing to close. Let me just read these verses. We're going to wrap up with this. Joshua the 18th chapter, the first four verses. Joshua is saying to the children of Israel, now the whole congregation of Israel were assembled together at Shiloh. And they set up a tabernacle of meeting there. And the land was subdued before them. But there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. <laughs> Look what he says. The land was subdued before them. But seven tribes hadn't received their inheritance. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, how long will you neglect to go in and possess the land that the Lord God of your fathers has given you? How long?
wrong. A shorter version, what in the world are you waiting for? Pick out from among you three men of each tribe and send them and they shall rise and go through the land and survey it according to their inheritance and come back to me. <laughs> Think about what's going on here. The land was subdued. It's yours. I gave it to you. But seven tribes still didn't have their inheritance. And he said, what is wrong with you? What have you been waiting for? In other words, you have the promise, but you got to take hold of it. God said, I've transitioned you for 40 years out of the wilderness, and now you're in the midst of the thing to take it. Why haven't you possessed it yet? We've got to recognize they had not received their inheritance. It, it simply meant they had failed to drive the enemy out. The inheritance was there. The promise was there. The blessing was there. But they had failed to do what God told them to do. I don't care how much you go around confessing God's promises. I don't care how much you try to make this happen or that happen. Until you have clean hands and a pure heart, and get the idols out of your life, you'll never ascend the hill of the Lord and see what he's subdued. And you'll hear the same words that Joshua said. Why have you not taken what I've given to you? How long are you going to slack to possess the land which the Lord gave to you? How long are you going to slack? Why are you so slow to take the heritage in the land? That, your fa that God gave to your fathers. How long are you going to waste time conquering? And I, I just feel an urgency in this message this morning to all of us. Folks, there are some things that are urgent that we possess now. God has given it. It is there. But we, this is the year to establish that thing. God gave the land. But their responsibility was to do whatever they had to do to possess it. Drive the enemy out, drive the wild beast out, cut down the briars, till the land. Whatever you need to do, you have to do it. Well, I'll just wait till God drops it on me. He already dropped it on you. He's waiting on you. What are you waiting for? How long are you going to be lazy? How long are you going to be self-preserving? How long are you going to be feel fearful? How long are you going to keep being afraid to engage the enemy? Well, I, I, when I got in, in the family of God, I didn't know I was going to have a fight like this. Well, how come he said put on the whole armor of God? Because he called you into battle. But he's equipped you for the battle. Aren't you glad? They were Abraham's seed. The land belonged to them. But they had to take possession of it experimentally. It was theirs legally, but they had to possess it. And they were slacking taking their possessions. We are the seed of Abraham. Come on, say, I'm the seed of Abraham. I have the promise. But Hosea says, my, God said to the prophet, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Folks, if God said it, it's worth fighting for. If God promised it, <laughs> it's worth contending for. Why? Because he wants to establish that thing. He didn't want you to be transitioning forever. Eleven days he transitioned them to the border. Forty years later. It was still there. Wow. The promised land. The promises of God. I like 2 Corinthians 2, and you know I love that, I, I love that chapter, or, or 2 Corinthians 1, verses 19 and 20, where it says the promises of God are yes, and in Him, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God by us. In other words, come on, say with me, God made the promise. Jesus went to the cross by his blood, said yes. I say 
Amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. It's okay. God already said, there's the promise. Jesus said yes, and he says in us, it is amen to the glory of God. So when we get a clear vision of God's promise, I don't care what kind of oppressors come, they have no authority to stop it any longer. But the devil will try to convince you there's nothing here worth fighting for. Even if you win, what do you got when it's over? The promise of God. But the truth is, our inheritance came through Jesus. The Father made the promise, but Jesus is the one that brought us to the inheritance. He's the one that said yes. My position is to say amen. So be it. I'll do it. I'll have that. I'll possess that thing. Hallelujah. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know the hope of our calling and the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. So Joshua said, what are you waiting for? Give me three men from every tribe. I want you to go out and survey the land. And I want you to report back to me. I want you to go out and check it out and see if it isn't just what God said. Isn't it there just like he said? And it was. But they had to do something. They had an inheritance, but they had to get a fresh revelation of their inheritance. Come on to the keyboard doesn't mean I'm going to stop, but it'll help people think. <laughs> they got a new vision of their inheritance. They had been so long waiting on God until they had lost the vision. And so God had to say, I'm going to send some spies out again. <laughs> Joshua, send some spies out one more time. And let them say the land's still there, just like I said. Seven tribes out of 12 still hadn't possessed their promise. If God ever spoke one thing to you you don't have yet, it's still ready to happen. Amen. And all I know is that about four weeks ago I had this vision about the favor of God in this season. And while I was in DC, I got this further understanding about the fact that 2011 was a year of transition, but 2012 is a year of establishing. But sometimes God has to say, I'm gonna take you so you can look at it again, so you can see it again. And I told you this, but I want to say it again because I feel like it's so vital in this season. And I had this vision of this screen over a window. And I heard almost an audible voice inside of me say, what, what's that screen for? And I said, it's to screen out the bugs and the things that don't belong in here. He said, that's right. He said, I want you to put a screen up over your life, in particular over what you see, hear, and say. Be careful to screen out everything coming into your life in this season. Because there will things try to come in to get you to see or hear or feel or taste or smell to somehow imagine it's not time yet or maybe I missed it or maybe I've waited too long it was 40 years now it was a few years later and Josh was having to say again what have you been waiting for I'm saying that to you today 
And I'm saying that to me today. What have we been waiting for? Some of you have been in this time of transition so long till you thought the transition time was your position because you've been there so long. But in 2012, you're about to transition to the position. It's about to be established. Stuff's about to break off. But I've got to ascend the holy hill. Because you see, it's not my position that's important, it's my perspective. And I only change positions to get a better perspective to see from God's vantage point. And when God's transitioning me, He's taking me to a new position so I can get a different perspective. And it's not easy climbing the hill. It's not easy. Several weeks ago when I started walking again, I liked the flat ground, but I was in hilly country. It was a lot easier to walk on the flat ground than to climb the hill. And the first two or three days climbing the hill was real hard. And I decided I'm gonna bypass that hill. But after I walked for about a week, I said, I'm gonna try that hill again. And you know, it was altogether different now. I had a different perspective because I had been repositioned in a different place now. Not to just be in a different place, but so I could see different. Are you getting this? When God's transitioning you, when you're ascending somewhere, it's to change your perspective so you can see as He sees. You can speak what He speaks. Now you can do what He says. And now the thing will be established. You can mark this day down. I looked around this, this auditorium this morning and I heard the Lord say to me, see what I'm doing? I'm establishing this thing. I'm establishing something in this place. You've been transitioning to it and it wasn't so easy. And when Jack was standing up there sharing his testimony, I'm thinking, wow. He had every reason to quit. Every reason to say, this is crazy. What am I doing wrong? And God said, you're not doing anything wrong. I'm just giving you a different perspective. You're ascending the holy hill. You're dropping off some baggage. You're laying aside the things that have been holding you back. And the sin that easily besets you, that means your environment's changing. Some of you have changed environments in 2011. And you're in, some of you are in process of changing it right now. But it's necessary. It's necessary to get God's perspective because you're about to be established. Something is about to be planted. Some things you thought you couldn't let go of won't even matter because where you're going, you'll have to, even, you'll have to think hard to remember where, what you left. Say it again with me, I'm transitioning to being established. What have I been waiting on? Ask yourself, say, what have I been waiting on? What have I been waiting on? <laughs> Stand with me. Wow. Well, this is just kind of a little talk this morning, but I believe it's a prophetic word. 
over your life and over my life and over our life. Seven tribes had not received their inheritance and they were in the midst of the land. They were at Shiloh. <laughs> they weren't on the border, they were in the middle of the territory. They had been walking all over their land and they hadn't possessed it. Some of us have been walking all over our inheritance and we haven't possessed it. And the Holy Ghost comes on a Sunday morning and says, what have you been waiting for?